Hello everyone, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my report on the full moon in Sagittarius in the days around May 23rd, 2024. We've got three awesome aspects, one of those with two outer planets, which is very influential. And so I'm calling the theme of this month, full flower moon, triple blossom bounty. The moons that we have in May, the new moon and the full moon are called flower moons because for obvious reasons, this is a time when flowers are blooming like crazy. You can see in this picture, um, in the video version that was taken, um, I took that at Kukanov in the Netherlands in tulip season in May. So it's all about things blossoming. And since we have these extra aspects, we've got the triple blossom bounty. So I'm going to layer in all of the things that are important here. We're going to talk about full moons in general, a full moon in Sagittarius in general, some really great ways to use that. Then we'll layer in uh, these different aspects so that we can get a really full, nice picture of the energetics of this time. So let's talk about the time of influence. New moons have different sets of cycles we're working with. One of the strongest sets is the four or so days before and the four or so days after. So we'll say around May 19th through May 27th, the energy is really strong. And the closer to the May 23rd you get, the more powerful for your wishes, for your intentions, for your ceremony, for your manifestations, for your launches, which this happens to also be my favorite day in maybe all year for doing something important because we're out of the Mercury retrograde shadow. We're not in any personal planet retrogrades. We've got these three amazing aspects and we're in the period of open stars from the personal planet perspective. And we're not going to have a lot of that energy this year. So if you have to do something important and you want to lock in amazing energy, this is the day or the days around this time, but they're especially potent on this day. And this could shift a day or so in either direction, depending on your time zone. Uh, but, you know, the influence is still these general times that I've mentioned. Then, of course, we also have a 28 day cycle at play. The moons always have some sort of storyline of a full moon cycle. And then we also have a 13 moon cycle because anything involving moons always have a storyline of from the last time this moon happened until the next time it happened. So things that built from 13 moons ago could be coming to fruition now. And things that you're doing now could have a story to play over the next 13 moons or 12-ish months. So let's start from the basics. What is a full moon? A full moon is when the sun, in this case in Gemini, is opposing the moon, in this case in Sagittarius. The duality that's intrinsic in the human experience shows up very nicely when we look at the wheel, when we look at astrology. There are pairs of zodiac signs that are each other's opposing and synergistic um, you know, energy friend. And Gemini and Sag, there's this beautiful opposing but unifying energy. And it's all about expansion and knowledge and information and education and learning and research and broadening of horizons, taking in information and putting it out. So you're going to see the urges for all of those things be very strong at this time. Moons tend to bring fullness, completion, fruition, and yes, sometimes drama because we do know that we are mostly water and the moon does regulate the tides and affect the tides on the earth. And so it affects us as well. All of the, the stars and the starry stories affect us. But I think most notably people have come to know these moon cycles. And it's always amazing too, because you can look out and see the moon, especially when it's full. So you can really connect to this cycle. And it's a really great way to align with the natural rhythms of the universe. Sometimes full moons bring things to a head. And sometimes they bring things out from the unconscious into the conscious. Sometimes they take things from behind the scenes out into the general picture or out into public. This is an amazing coming out time with anything that's important to you, anything that you've been working on. This is a very grand, very diverse, very broadening type of energy. And if you're trying to go big, like glow global, glow, <laughs> go global, then this is one of the best times of the year because Sagittarius rules all of that. And in this moon phase, it's in its fullness. It's in its fruition. It's in some form of completion. The energies of Sagittarius and Gemini move in a spiral pattern. So you will feel this. 
You know, if you are a Sag or a Gemini or you know someone with these placements, you'll know they're all over the place, right? And I am a Sagittarius. I have nine placements in Sag. So I get very worked up about Sag, um, epic Sag um, transits like this. But this is an energy of this time. So even if you're not that way naturally, you will be scattered. You will be all over the place. You will be overdoing things. You will be taking things to Jupiterian excess. Jupiter rules Sagittarius and things will be done to the nth degree. This can be amazing if you're trying to do something with oomph. If you are doing something that is not good for you and is not safe, this could be very bad. So this is not the time to apply this excess energy to something that could be destructive or dangerous because it could take it far beyond what you intend and that can make it very dangerous. So hopefully a word to the wise is sufficient there that you can go and become a zealot with trying to heal the things maybe that you do um, in excess and take on some healthy, healthy excessive types of things, um, you know, but just take some caution there because this is a very powerful aspect and there is a lot going on at this time. Okay, so next layer, let's talk about fun ways to use the full moon in Sagittarius. I guess one of the most obvious is to go on a long distance trip. That could be international or if you would like are in Florida, Alaska could be long distance and it's still in the country, right? But it's this energy of broadening, of broadening your horizons. And what does that better than travel, right? So um, if you're not traveling at this time, you may be planning a trip for the future or you may be preparing to go on a trip soon. And that is amazing, amazing, amazing way, an amazing way to use this energy. Or you can embark on some kind of adventure. It can be nearby. You can do what I like to do, which is be the tourist. I call it be the tourist in whatever town that I live in and kind of look at it through the eyes of people that come from far away to come to this place and see what I can see in it that may be different after, you know, from the mundane experience. Even if it's a quick road trip or a hike on a new trail or some kind of adventure, and that could be like an armchair warrior adventure as well, watching a series that involves international or spiritual topics, something that expands your horizons. Even if you go to a nearby town you haven't explored, that could be really great for this. It really encourages discovery and adventure. So however you can find that in your circumstance, that's going to be a great way to use this. And that may find you without you even trying. But part of what I like to educate on with astrology is seeing how you can use this energy consciously and not just wait for things to be delivered to you, but also just align, you know, and be a co-creator with the universe. Something you can do if you don't want to travel or you can't travel is to host a themed party. This is super fun. So like a foreign theme party or some sort of philosophical debate nights, you know, Sagittarius is all about foreign cultures, philosophical discussions, you could organize a get together where guests dress up from different cultures or something where they're honoring, you know, the beliefs or the food or something like that from somewhere else. Or you can try a sampler from, you know, some place with different types of food than you usually do. And in general, just trying something new and exciting. So something that you've never done. And since the energies are so forward moving from May 14th until around July, middle mid-July, around July 16th, we've got the last big open period free from personal planet retrogrades. So this is a really amazing time to try something new, to start something new, to, you know, start a new education program, commit to learning something or to go deeper into something that you've always wanted to study. It's also a fantastic time if you're a teacher for your teacher self to come out where you take your learning and experience and you help other people with it. So, you know, just basically something new and expansive is the gist here. And there are also spiritual ways that you can use the full moon. So the philosophical types of or spiritual types of study. You could go just on a bender. Um, zealotry is definitely a word that I use for, <laughs> for Sagittarius, and I tend to be the epitome of that with my nine placements in Sagittarius. I do tend to go um, overboard with everything. And you can do this, you know, in some sort of healthy way, in some sort of broadening way. 
The illumination of the full moon can bring new insights and deeper understanding when studying topics like philosophy or religion or metaphysical subjects. Now you could just go deep into the thing that you're drawn to, but there's also something about Sagittarius that is a unifying factor where you're like standing on top of the mountain and you're looking at the common links between things where you can see how everything is connected because of that bigger kind of bird's eye view. You can do some sort of vision quest or reflective retreat. This can be as simple as spending a night somewhere quiet under the stars or, you know, going on a very far trip like we talked about before. You can also expand your spiritual practices. So anything that adds diversity or something interesting or something extra to what you're doing would very much satisfy these energies. Okay, so let's talk about the first of my most favorite over the top, I'm so excited aspect that is flavoring this full moon. Whenever we have aspects occurring at the same time as the full moon, they get worked into not just this period of time, but also the effects of the full moon over that 13 moon cycle. So it's like a blueprint that gets worked into the storyline of however this manifests and is very exciting. And sometimes we have annoying and difficult aspects that get worked in, but not this moon. This moon is epic in every way. Okay, so the first thing we have happening is Jupiter and Venus conjunct. This is actually one of the most um, positive, happy, lucky transits of the whole year or aspects of the whole year. And Venus rules love and beauty and money and relationships and self-esteem and comforts and nurturance and sustenance. And Jupiter is the great expander, the ruler of Sagittarius. So you've got more of the Sagittarius energy as it relates to all of these Venusian types of things. And it's at the 29th, very critical degree of Taurus. So this can be the manifestation of something material you've been working on. This is an earth energy, but it's got the expansiveness of the fire energy while it's worked into the earthly creations. So this is very exciting. It can be very lucky, very amazing for winning money or earning money or sales. It's definitely good to plan promos or anything at this time or launch something. Like I said, if you have to launch a business or make a big decision or an engagement, if you're looking for a time to get engaged, there really is no better time that I can see than this right here. This is epic expansion of love. What could be better than that, right? And of course, finances. So if you're getting married on this date, wow, amazing. Or the days around here, amazing. I love this for you. So this is just so exciting. You can hear the excitement in my voice. I'm excited about it for everybody. Um, and even though I'm a Sagittarius, so I feel something personal in some of this, it's really a global, these are global astrological phenomena that can affect everybody equally. Okay, so what's the next thing? Okay, so the next thing going on is Venus is making a 60 degree angle with Neptune. And we'll just go ahead and add the third layer, which is since Jupiter and Venus are conjunct, Jupiter is making a 60 degree angle with Neptune. And that's actually even a bigger deal than any of the things we're talking about. Because when two outer planets get together, it's rare that it happens. Now, in this case, this will happen every um, 12 to 14 years. 12, 13, 13-ish, you know, um, years that Jupiter will be in this. Actually, it could happen twice within a 14-year cycle because it's, Jupiter has a 12-year cycle, so it takes Jupiter 12 years to go around. And so it's at a 60-degree point here. And then when it gets to approaching Neptune, it would also be at a 60-degree point. So this happens about twice in around 13 years. But it's still not a very common transit. It's still two outer planets getting together and has a very expanded time of influence. So all of the things we're talking about are very strong between around May 19th and May 27th. But this particular aspect, we would feel this at least three or four weeks before it happens and at least three or four weeks after. So that's all of May and into the first half of June is really ripe with this energy. What kind of things can we see from this aspect, which again is in effect all of May into June, when Jupiter and Taurus is making this 60 degree angle called a sextile with Neptune and Pisces, it creates this harmonious link between the planet of growth and expansion, which is Jupiter, and the planet of spirituality and idealism, which is Neptune. 
So this is a blending of Taurus's practical energy and very material energy with Pisces ethereal sort of dreamscape. And there are so many ways that this can manifest in positive ways. So enhanced intuition in general, but especially financial intuition. When we're looking at things that have to do with money, sometimes people just go on logic. Sometimes it becomes very segmented that money, okay, money means logic. We have to do everything logically, but this combination can help you have good intuition that can help you to enhance your financial picture. And this is very exciting. So you could be drawn to an intuitive investment. And by the way, this is an amazing time for investments, savvy financial decisions, anything having to do with investments in the arts or music or psychology or spirituality, starting a business in any of those arenas, artistic or musical or spiritual is a great combination of these energies. It also encourages growth in the creativity arts. So it makes it a really prolific time for expression of art or spiritual content or, you know, musical, uh, prolific musical outcomes. And it can also be potentially lucrative. So whenever we bind these, you know, spiritual and material energies together in a nice angle, it always increases the odds that you can have the best of both worlds where something feeds your soul and also feeds yourself and your family. So that's very exciting. It's like a spiritual and material harmony, you know, in a time where this aspect is fostering this beautiful balance between spiritual depth and material security. There could be newfound harmony in how you balance your material desires and your spiritual needs. So anything along those lines, philanth uh, philanthropic projects, things like that. Neptune also influences uh, empathy and compassion, and Jupiter can enhance generosity. So if you have a, a project that you need to be funded and you need angel investors, this is a time where people are going to be inclined to give. So if you need something, whether you're an individual or an organization, this could be a great time to ask. People are going to want to say yes right now to things like this. There's also this deep psychological um, insight potential and an expansion of philosophical um, understandings about things. And I keep using the words broaden your horizons, and it's really like that. So you could change your mind about something which could change your life. And that's really how it works. Sometimes in an instant, we have a different perspective. And it definitely, definitely, definitely can institute an attitude of gratitude, which completely changes how your immune system works, how your neurological system works, how all of the measures in your body, um, you know, perform. Having an attitude of gratitude, there it, it lends itself to a cascade of neurotransmitters and immunological function that can improve your health as well. So you could have insights about that and just start seeing things in a way where you feel more empowered. And there's actually a bonus aspect that I didn't mention in the title and I haven't talked about yet, but I am going to bring in here because the day before this, um, this amazing day, May 23rd, where all these aspects are happening, flavoring this expansive full moon. We also have the sun in Gemini trine Pluto in Aquarius, and that will still be bringing good vibes into this day. So we've got that level that we can also look at things. And so this combination, when the sun, which is how we shine, which is our expression, combines in the most favorable angle in all of astrology with Pluto, the great transformer in this air, energy can really lift spirits in a major way. And by the way, I didn't mention yet, but all of this Jupiterian energy can also enhance optimism. And faith is the foundation of positive experience, I believe. You know, there are very few forces more powerful than faith in the world. And Jupiter in positive angles can actually help to give you this and help you to help other people to have faith. Um, but when the sun is in this configuration with Pluto, it can definitely lend itself to breakthrough ideas and innovations, empowered communication. And another thing that is tying through all of these storylines as different layers of potential is prolific expression and the confidence to do it. So, you know, you may want to spend some time or leave some time during this 
this stretch, this window where you can just write or perform or create because your inspiration, that's another thing that Jupiter rules, may be very, very, very strong. And this is one of those times where you just might be in such an amazing flow that if you schedule yourself off, you may be really glad that you did. Pluto in Aquarius definitely has a lot to do with technology for progress. Uh, so, you know, there could be ways that learning some technological things can assist you with your expression. And this energy, since it's in Aquarius, has to do with activism and social change and positive changes as well. As I said, these aspects are so strong that nobody is going to get left out of this. And there are definitely, um, you know, more, there's more that we could go into about who could get even more in-depth blessings from this, but that's not the subject of this um, report. But I do want to say, if you are a cuspy um, Taurus to Gemini person, so like last few days of Taurus, first few days of Gemini, there's definitely going to be extra oomph for you at this time. And that is in this window of May 19th through May 27th, but it is also starting sooner than that and extending later than that because of this Jupiter-Neptune aspect. Also, if you have early degree Sagittarius placements, so like Scorpitarius friends, or if you have early degrees of like beginnings of air signs and fire signs, there are also extra kisses there. But again, don't, don't feel worried if you're not in that zone because this is so magnificent that everyone can get the goodies. The full moon itself is at two degrees of Sagittarius. So that's why I was referring to all of the early degree fire and air friends. So I've given you some dates that are relevant this month. If you love more dates and want to know the aspects and how they may manifest, then definitely sign up for my free VIP community at anniehelpsyou.com. Just put your name and email address there. And then when you're in the, um, you'll get the welcome letter, then you click on the archives and you can put whatever month you're looking for and it will be there. Then you can access my secret star portal, which has all extra content plus early content plus my written horoscopes and so much more. And if you want to learn astrology with me, including my basics course or my Become a Professional Astrologer Mastery Certification course, you can up level there. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash eclipses to understand the eclipse rhythm that's at play. Even when we're not in eclipse season, you can see what storylines are happening for the years of each eclipse story. And for my easy access player, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com forward slash astrology and whatever is current, this is constantly updating. So my podcast playlist will be there. My video playlist will be there. And if there's any videos that ha need timestamp, it, it will be somewhere there. If you're on YouTube, make sure you click the bell because that will be how you get my Notifications right into your inbox. If you're subscribed but you didn't click the bell, then you might not be hearing from me. But if you click the bell, then you can. And you can always look in the notes underneath the podcast or the notes underneath the video by clicking the little more button underneath the video title and then clicking more again to reveal the notes. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.